Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with the real Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. From author Donnie Bovine comes the book, How to Be a Success Champion, available on Amazon. After years of living other people's dreams, author Donnie Bovine decided to jump out on his own and start a business thinking it would be easy. Instead, he had a rude awakening and quickly understood that he had spent 20 years being an employee and had no idea how to be a business owner. His business was tanking and he was on the brink of losing everything when he decided to fight for business freedom. In this must-read and life-changing book, author Donnie Donnie Bovine shares with readers his story intermingled with lessons learned from his mistakes and his failures. And how to be a success champion, you will find advice the author received from mentors and how he went from zero to a six-figure business. The author walks you through the steps of how to get out of your own way, how to play the game of business and win, find your strengths, how to network effectively, how to build a personal brand, how to create champions for your business, how to get great at sales, how to take complete ownership of you and your business how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon in both kindle and paperback editions order your copy right now it makes a great book for corporate events too how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon hello hello welcome to the all in podcast with nate Payo. of course i am your host nate Payo. today i'm joined with Tyler Hansen. So Tyler's been a leading sales guy for a lot of years. He's he's been with um he's somebody I've connected with in the past and I think he's got an exciting story. He's been with some tech startups, uh, Luxor One, which is uh, parcel lockers for uh, multifamily. It's pretty cool uh, technology that allows you to receive and, and retrieve um, Amazon packages and UPS packages, all that kind of stuff um, remotely. So you don't have to get it at your door and worry about package theft. And then after um, that was acquired by a, a company called Asa Abloy, he, he left and he joined another tech company uh, called Zumper, which is in the multifamily retail real estate space, um, helping uh, connect uh, renters or residents to, to living uh, places in apartment living. So he's got a lot of experience in sales, got a lot of experience in tech, and he also started his career in the fitness industry. So I think he's touching on a lot of topics I like to talk about, which is fitness, tech, real estate, sales, all that kind of stuff, and networking. So welcome to the show, Tyler. How are you? Yeah, thanks a lot, Nate. I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. So we were chatting earlier a little bit, and I think this is a good way to kind of start the conversation, was how people get started in sales. And it's just kind of funny that I think there's like a few jobs that, that people get like right out of high school, right out of college. And they just get thrown to the wolves trial by fire of sales. One I think is people go work at enterprise rent a car. That's the one I always see people at. And the other one is they work in fitness, either selling gym memberships or selling personal training sessions. Um, and it's one of those things you got to learn your craft uh, very quickly. You're dealing with a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities, and you're also probably getting told no a bunch. You're getting rejection thrown in your face, and you learn quickly to overcome it and tell your story. So let's let's talk about that. How is how is that as your first experience in the in the business world? Yeah, yeah, I love that question. Um, you know, my, my story is a little bit different from the standpoint of, you know, when I got out of college and I came down to, to San Francisco, I had a job lined up. I moved down here from Oregon and had, uh, you know, a job that I was looking forward to. And that was during the dot-com bust. Uh, that job and the entire department within that company was eliminated um, like a week and a half before I moved down here. 
And so I found myself living in San Francisco with no job and needed to kind of figure things out. And I, I sort of fell into, into fitness and the role that I fell into specifically uh, was at 24 hour fitness and it was in like a manager trainee program. And um, it wasn't something that I had considered uh, all that much, but I'd always been a believer in it. And uh, you know, once I, once I started working in the industry, it was just something that, that, you know, caught my heart and, um, you know, held a number of different management and, and, and really just leadership roles, um, at, at 24, um, amazing place to learn. And, uh, you know, after a few years there, I kind of leaned a little bit more into, uh, the sales part of things. And, um, and that's, that's really where I found my, my passion was, was on the growth side of the business. You mentioned, a lot of people start their careers and it's, um, I, I think back the hamster wheel starts turning. I think back to, um, all of the different, uh, you know, the, the, the guys and gals over the years that, uh, that I hired and, and was their first job out of college. And I look at where they're at now. And, uh, a lot of them I'm, I'm still in touch with and they've gone on to do some, some pretty amazing things. But, um, I think you're spot on with, you know, I think fitness, uh, is a, for me, it was an incredible um, experience and, and introduction into the professional world. And I know for a lot of other people that I'm in touch with, it's, um, you know, it's where they uh, learn that foundational set of skills to, uh, to be able to, um, you know, make money and, and make business happen. So, mm -hmm. well, it's an interesting, it's like an interesting concept because like you do it and you're like, I, I oh, maybe people are drawn to fitness because they personally like fitness and they like working out like, Hey, I love hanging out in a gym. Um, but you're also getting a chance to really serve people and help people achieve their goals. And I think that's something that sales and networking is, is, a a, a skill that, that takes time to develop as you really learn like, Hey, it, it, my success is based on the success of my clients and you start getting them to, to achieve their goals. And it's an exciting process. And I think there's a lot of fulfillment when you see people like you, you can see that you're making a difference in someone else's life. Yeah, I think you're spot on with that. And, and that's, that's, generally one of the first things that, you know, we teach and, you know, this is thinking back, you know, years and years ago, I still get a, a hand in, in the fitness space with, you know, my wife and, and her gym and that sort of thing. But it's one of the first things that um, you sort of learn is that, Hey, we're in this to, to help people. And that's really where your mindset has to be. Um, you know, one of the first things I, I, I recall, and it's like, you know, clear as day is if, if you chase the money, it's going to run. So, um, you know, so, you know, really focus on the person that's um, in front of you and the opportunity that they have to, uh, to change their life for the better. And, and, um, you know, for the people I've worked with over the years are, are fully bought in. And most of the people that I've ever met in fitness are fully bought into, uh, bought into to that notion. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, I think like your career path is, is very fascinating. I think a lot of people would be very, I don't know, envious of it. It's like, it's like these, these, I think right now highlight jobs that you've held that I think a lot of people gravitate towards and they want nowadays. It's like the old rock star baseball player days is like you either want to be uh, in fitness or you want to be working in startups and, and Silicon Valley. And you have done that uh, for a lot of years. You've done it successfully. You've been with um, a company that, uh, that that did really well and, and you exited with them, which, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, going through an, an exit or uh, an acquisition of a company is is a unique challenge in and of itself and then going back into the startup world again another time. So would you say like, what is your take on luck? Do, does luck play a role in like the way your life has progressed or what is your take on luck? Yeah. Um, on the topic of luck as it pertains to career stuff, um, that's a, um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. I think that there are certain elements. I mean, I think a lot of like Nate, where my mind goes when I, when I think about luck is, um, a place of, uh, gratitude for all the things that I 
have been given. So like, you know, a body that functions, uh, well, for the most part, mm-hmm. um, a, a, a brain that, that works and, you know, kind of being born into, you know, um, the environment given some of the opportunities and that sort of thing, um, that you're given. So that's kind of where my head goes with regards to luck. Um, but on specifically more on the topic of what we were talking about and some of the things that I've been able to do in my career, um, it's really been a, um, I think a, a function of, um, you know, timing, um, with people. And I, I believe there's an element of luck certainly tied to that. And then, uh, the individuals that I met that sort of, uh, but lent themselves to those new opportunities. Um, a huge part of it, which is what, what you preach that, that networking piece is something, you know, I, I very much believe in and it's what, um, helped, you know, create those opportunities for me to move on and to take on other roles. And in every case, there was a very strong networking element to it. And I feel very lucky that I was able to meet those people that opened those doors. Um, a lot of times it wasn't just one person, but it was multiple people that helped guide that next step on my Mm -hmm. journey. Um, but I really think, you know, on the topic of, of being lucky, there's, um, we're all given a lot of, um, I, I, I believe uh, a lot of chances, uh, to do things and, and what you do when you're given those, uh, those opportunities. I think, you know, we, we get lucky and then there's times where we can also, uh, come in and, and make a, a major impact and create that luck for ourselves. So it's a, it's a great topic. One that I probably need to put a little bit more thought into. <laughs> well, you did touch on networking <laughs> and, and, and we share um, a connection with with a, another gentleman, Joshua Gr- Grosser, that was over at um, Luxor One, and and his story of getting there was this similar thing too. Is like, hey, you, you know, you guys are in in Silicon Valley, and you're kind of you know working in different industries, and people know who you're at. And I think he got recruited over too because he had worked with, uh, I believe, the gentleman that founded it. I'm probably getting his story all wrong, but like it was just kind of like. Hey, we've worked together. I'm doing something. Like, why don't you come over to get me? And I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm making it simpler. But it seems like in this like Silicon Valley world, it's like people are used to working for startup companies, and and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm busy with this project. It's, you know, I've been in it for three, five years, and then you're between projects, and somebody's like, hey, I'm working on this new one. You want to come over and do this thing? And like, yeah, that's cool. And let's go over here. And it, it really is a lot about networking to find the good key people that you're going to bring on board to start something. You, you know, you're, you're initial hires, not just in startups, but in any company, the team that you bring on has a lot to do with the, the success of whatever projects you're working on, the dynamics, how well you guys work together, the creativity that flows, the energy that's produced. It's, mm-hmm. it's an important step and, you know, how you develop teams and work with, with people. Um, and I, I think, oh yeah, I was going to say you, you did, you did actually capture that, that right. That's pretty much what happened. You know, I had, um, some, um, you know, colleagues, professional acquaintances, friends, um, uh, d- definitely I, I consider them friends that, uh, you know, originally it started in the, in the laundry and dry cleaning locker space. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the, 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 the founder of that, that, and that team, um, you know, I've, I've always, I, I love that business from the second I heard about it and, uh, was, was a customer of it. And I'd been in touch with, uh, the founder and um, and and Chris, who's who's a good friend of mine now, and he helped grow that internationally. And I, I was always intrigued. And then when the opportunity with you know with with package lockers came along, um, I did some homework and uh, looked at the uh, you know the problem it solved in the addressable market. And at the time, I you know was, I had a, a a pretty awesome job at at Intuit and. Uh, an awesome mentor who I'm still very close with and, but decided to take that, that kind of leap of faith. And yeah, it was a direct result of um, sort of the networking and, and a, a startup opportunity that, you know, right, right place, right time. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with things is like when you're, at least for me, when I was starting off my career, you, 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 don't put a lot of effort into deliberately growing your network. You're like, Oh, I work with this person. Like, it's kind of cool. I met somebody. And then like, you realize like 10 years later, like you're going up in your career at the same time, they're going up in their career and you're all like, 
entry level newbies. And next thing you know, you're both at like running part portions of business and you're like working well together. And you're like, man, I wish I would have like spent some more time managing some of these relationships or making them more deliberate early on and not just going, Hey, I got work friends and I got social friends and they don't overlap. And then all of a sudden your social friends, you know, have life happen and, and they kind of drift off and you're, you're seeing their work friends a lot more and they become the people you interact with. And those are the people that like, you're able to call when you need problems or if you're looking for a job, they're the ones that help you fill it, that type of stuff. So, you know, going to your transition from corporate America into it's a huge company. I think a lot of people know them for, for QuickBooks and for um, TurboTax. Um, yep. And to say, hey, I'm going to take a leap of faith uh, and go work for a company that may or may not make it. Um, granted, Silicon Valley, I guess, is probably a little bit more um, common for people to do that. But if you're, you know, Midwest Joe, you know, leaving safe, secure job to go to the unknown is is not always this easy decision to make. So like what, what kind of advice do you give to people if they say, hey, I want to get, I want to make a transition. I would want to get into um, building businesses or build my own business, either as a early employee or a founder or a CEO. And is it right for everybody? Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, I, I tend to think, yeah, I, I sort of half joke that, you know, I'm as, as close as it gets to being an entrepreneur without actually <laughs> be, being one um, from the, you know, more uh, traditional uh, standpoint of, you know, how, how you might find an entrepreneur. But, um, you know, with, with my wife and her starting her business, um, you know, I think for, for me, that transition out of like a, a, you know, a large company where um, there's, you know, I think relative um, sort of safety with, uh, you know, your job and the ability to, um, you know, to have a consistent income to then going to um, a startup. It, it It's actually more, for me, it was more calculated, I guess, than it might seem. And I had a lot of people that came and they're like, you left your job at Intuit to sell like what, like package boxes, like post office boxes, like they, you know, they, they didn't really fully understand. Um, but, you know, by the time I had joined uh, the company, a lot of the product stuff had been, you know, developed. It wasn't super, super early, but more important, I had a, a couple of individuals, at least there was, yeah, um, a, a couple, you know, a couple guys that had uh, a ton of experience in the locker space and um, with kind of getting into multifamily. And it wasn't really quite as risky as say, uh, your your real early stage pre revenue startup. So I came in mm -hmm. like just when we were starting to sell, um, and then also I knew that if that for some reason that didn't work out, I was pretty sure it would. But if it didn't, uh, there was that that dry cleaning and, and laundry locker business that um, also still I believe has a ton of potential, and I had a, a lot of energy around that as well. So there was sort of a a little bit of a at least a backup plan there. Um, but but at the time. I, I was, you know, based on sort of... I lost you. I don't know if you can hear me. Are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? <laughs> now I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not not sure exactly where I lost you. Can you hear um, me okay? Yeah, you were talking about... What were you talking about? It was like right when you started going into... Um, you just finished talking about the dry cleaners, uh, the dry clean business, and, and that was kind of like it went... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to think. 
um, you know, with, with dry cleaning, uh, you, you know, with the dry clean lockers and that sort of thing, you know, we, um, th- there was a, uh, sort of a, uh, I guess a plan B, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, from, from, from that standpoint. So, um, it wasn't as risky, but, uh, it still was an entry into the, uh, into the, the startup world and, uh, and one that had a, a great product market fit. Yeah. I remember when it started coming out, like you'd, you'd start hearing about, you know, people, are, we, we would have the apartments, projects, our, our communities, and there'd be so many locker, there'd be so many packages coming in. This was like four years ago. And so it was still like not the level I think people are at now. And I can't imagine what things have been like with, with the current situation, but but they're like, hey, we don't have a place to store these. Like, let's start looking at lockers. And you're just like, this is like such a cool business because it's tech, but it's it's simple. Like in the sense of like, it's it's like you know, it's not like inventing um, you know crazy apps in the way change the way people live. And it's just like, hey, this just makes a lot of sense. So I get how it just it's it's startup. It feels risky, but at the same time, it felt like there's a huge need for this. And if you can you know, manufacture these, like they're going to go. And, and the, and the way everybody's kind of set up, it's like, you know, there's not a easy barrier to entry. Um, there, there's, there's, there's okay. once you kind of like get in with a, a company, like there's a big back end software and a management of it. And it's like, okay, it's not easy to, to make a transition. So it, it from, from looking at it, it is just like, Hey, yeah, this is something a lot of people need. And it's it's not hard to um, well it's not hard it is hard to to knock somebody off the block if if you came in with something else later but so then you left from Luxor did you go right to Zumper or was there a transition in between that? Um, you know there was a transition time in between that so I was doing some uh, some consulting work um, for another early stage company and and you know at the time it was it was really around okay as Um, you know, as I know the, um, you know, there's a new chapter coming and that sort of thing, like what, what direction do I fully want to go? So my, my next role was, um, was a little bit, it was, it was, it was in a consulting, uh, role where I was kind of building out, um, some of the go-to-market types of things and, and kind of understanding, you know, is the multifamily space uh, one that I want to stay in, um, or do I explore in more detail some of these, uh, other opportunities, um, with other tech companies and I had, Probably, I don't know. I, I think Nate, I had several dozen meetings um, over mm-hmm. the course of, of of a few months. And um, for me, I've always really enjoyed working in the multifamily real estate space. I mean, since you know the first day I, I came in, I think I you know I went to a uh, a multifamily trade show uh, mm-hmm. with with Chris at, at Luxor One and. Um, you know, from that point, it was, it was something, you know, I could, it was an industry I could see myself working into. And so I just did a bunch of homework on pretty much every tech company that, uh, that serves the multifamily space. And, um, uh, I found one that, uh, you know, that I just aligned with and, and, uh, really respected, you know, the leadership and, and the direction of the company. And it was that real kind of growth stage, um, that, you know, got my, got me excited and, mm-hmm. So, um, you know, found a way to, to kind of beat the doors down and, and join that organization. Yeah. So do you think like there's a, the networking played a portion of, of finding your role at Zumper or, you know, how did you come about that, that opportunity? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely did. It definitely did. I, and I think that's, um, one of the, that's probably one of the, the the most valuable skills I think I've, I've learned, um, and it, it started probably as I was moving on from uh, the fitness space. But um, every every role that I've had has been really um, uh, like a product of just networking and having the right conversations with the right people. And then there's um, some some serendipitous uh, you know collisions. So you meet people at you know trade shows and that sort of thing, and one conversation kind of leads to another, and then um, from there, I think it's you know there's a lot of a lot of work behind the scenes, and um, you know I kind of set some goals on on what I wanted to accomplish and and the the, the types of people I wanted to work with, um, and then from there I just 
you know, it's, it was about, uh, you know, getting the, the right introductions and, and having the right conversations. And then, you know, of course, I think for, um, you know, companies that are being responsible and checking those, those references and resources and looking at the, the background, that sort of thing. And I'd put in uh, a lot of the work on, on the back end to, you know, for them to feel comfortable and say, yeah, we'll bring uh, this guy on as, as a leader. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's definitely a huge network component to it. Um, and well, I think there's also uh, a big network component on the, on the, on the customer side, because you probably had a lot of overlap with, with customers, customers you're reaching out to maybe not the exact same person at the same position but you're going to have a leg up to say hey i'm going to call on xyz property management company like i know the guy over there who do i got to call to get in front of you know this this the the right marketing person so i think you're you're having your network on both sides is is just as important you never know who's going to be your customer. One of the things I always say is the the multifamily world is really, really small. So you might, you never want to burn a bridge because you might have a bad experience working for one company, working with one company. Um, so you, you know, you treat the person that's over there in the role that's your counterpart poorly. Well, they might bounce off and they might go to your favorite client and work there. And all of a sudden, like, you know, you, you're, you're at their mercy because you're, a jerk to them to begin with. So I think you never know where those relationships are going to play a part or play a big role. So you got to treat everybody with like, you know, a lot of respect, a lot of class and just say, Hey, look, you never know who's going to be your next boss. Um, so treat them that way. That's, that's so well said. And, uh, you know, I learned from a mentor of mine uh, at Intuit, Kyle, um, you know, it's like, never, never leave anyone burned. And, and, and that, that's one thing that I can say um, that I, you know, feel um, I feel really great about with, you know, with, with Luxor and, and that, that was the mentality we took all around, like, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff happens with, you know, you're talking about hardware, software, and a service and support element. And there's a huge, huge service element that um, I think is, is blended into sales. And I, I believe it's being talked about more and more. And you have a lot of the, um, you know, the sales trainers and people that, that are able to, um, you know, success, or they're, they're able to articulate, you know, just how important it is that that service piece is there um, to the growth of the business. Um, but you're right, like in multifamily, you know, that was sort of the thing is, you know, no matter how, what happens, um, like, we're, we're never going to leave anybody feeling burned, and we'll go above and beyond if that means me like jumping on a, a flight out to Chicago tomorrow morning to like, smooth things over with the customer, we would, you know, spare no expense in, in doing that. Um, and that that's definitely you know, I think paid off both for, um, you know, that organization and for me, you know, personally, because you write those connections and the people that are willing to say, Hey, this, you know, this guy or this gal gets it. And, um, you know, they're going to, when they say they're going to do something, um, they'll not only do it, but, you know, I feel like they'll go to the moon for me to, to make it. So mm-hmm. for um, sure. So that kind of leads me to my next question for you, which is this idea of, all in and what does all in mean to you um in regards to like an idea or an outcome yeah and and i think that that all in is uh sort of you know when when we were talking that's one of the things that's one of the phrases that really sort of captured me and got me thinking um you know like what is how would i define all in and and uh and what are times in my life where i can say okay i'm i'm all in on this particular thing. And I think, you know, for me, it's like when, when you're all in, um, you're, you're so focused, you're so committed to whatever that thing is. And I have a, a couple examples that pop into my head, but where anything other than success in, in what it is you're doing is, is, is heartbreak. So like mm-hmm. failure is not an option, um, where it actually feels like, you know, uh, life or death. Um, even if it's, even if it's not. So I, I recall like, after I made the transition from the fitness industry um, into tech and it was, it was, you know, it was challenging. It was pretty rough and I was used to more of a a face-to-face, you know, selling process and being an expert on the things I was talking about. And um, I was having a really tough time and this was in like the first, you know, probably few months. And I had a a manager take me out for, um, take me out for a beer. after 
uh, a rough week or a rough day and he kind of said, Hey man, um, like, I understand you're really passionate, but this is just a job. Like it's just work. And, and my response was, um, you know, for me, it's not that it's like, it's way more than that. It's like, I don't have a choice. Like this is, this is, I, I think I told him, I think I literally said this, Nate, at the time I was doing my MBA, I was under a lot of stress, but I said, I'd rather die than not be successful at this role. And that's like <laughs> really ex- extreme, extreme language. And, and, uh, you know, but, but it is, I, I think it is how I felt at, at the time, like in that moment. Um, and, you know, I was, I was spread thin in a number of areas, but this, this particular uh, thing, which was, you know, figuring out tech sales and figuring out this next chapter in my career was something that um, I was so committed to that, um, you know, f- failure just was not something that was um, possible. Mm-hmm. And that that's like a mindset, like it doesn't come naturally. I mean, but it doesn't, it doesn't. Like some people are like, I think predisposed, predisposed to be being competitive and not not they hate losing more than they like winning like so they absolutely hate losing but i do think it still can be be taught and it's about you know having discipline and questioning your why and really getting deep downside and making you know you're asking yourself the hard questions and not giving up and and, and people that tend to give up tend to give up earlier and more often the more times they do and then the people that just like are hard-headed and they're stubborn and they're going to grind it out at first you're like that's crazy but i think they know like what they're capable of and when you start challenging your mindset and you start challenging your, your beliefs and say hey i can do this if i put my mind to it there's there's a way to get there um you you can change your mindset to be more determined more resilient and when you push yourself past those limits that you put on yourself, I think you go back and you say, hey, I can always do more. And then the next time those challenges come up, like you said, you got like frustrated and had a bad day. Um, you you maybe understand it's part of the process so much. And like it just because it's a, it's a struggle, you don't maybe beat yourself up quite as bad about like, hey, it sucks. It's like, but tomorrow's another day. We're not giving up. Um yeah. You said failure's not an option. Um, so as long as you get up another day and keep keep chasing after it, you haven't failed yet. So um, there's a, there's a lot to be said about the tenacity. And I think you know if people say that they don't have it, I do think that they can learn it, but they just need to um, start developing habits that that instill that and and work hard towards them. And the bigger tenacity comes with it when you start paying attention to the small things too. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And, and, you know, for, for making big changes in, you know, life, um, whether it's career or otherwise, I think, you know, if we're looking to accomplish something great, like in inherent in that, in accomplishing that thing or, you know, completing whatever it is like inherent in that is, um, like learning and growing and, and opening your mind and you're sort of forced to be, um, humble. And for me, it was take a step back where, you know, I was in a, a leadership role. And again, as I, as I mentioned, um, you know, a little bit earlier, um, in the show was, you know, I, I was, a, a a master in this certain thing and, and knew the fit, the fitness space really well. And then had to go to a place where I was really kind of forced to be humble and, and to listen to others and that, and to, and to open my mind and, um, and become just a great student and, and a sponge. And, and that was part of that, um, uh, kind of all in because, if I was going to accomplish that, um, I, I had to do so by um, by learning and practicing humility and and so on. Yeah, there's no doubt you're embodying the the vision of all in that that I hold in my head, and I think you've described it to a T. What what you had in mind too. So we're kind of winding up a little bit, running out of time. But I wanted to have give you a chance to talk about what Zumper is and you know, maybe describe who that ideal person is that Zumper and yourself wants to work with. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Zumper is, uh, it's an essential marketplace for uh, apartments. So, you know, mission is to make renting an apartment as easy as booking uh, a hotel room. And um, I, I think we're very much on our, uh, well on our way to, uh, to doing that. 
um, you know, our primary customer um, right now and who I'm working with the most is going to be uh, those multifamily operators. Um, so there's um, there's a number of different ways that the platform works. And of course, you have the app and, and, and you know, for people familiar with um, renting an apartment, it's um, there can be a, a lot of uh, really, really uh, tough kind of catching points, whether it be, um, you know, getting to the apartment to view it or putting a down payment on it, or you know, there's all there's all kinds of things that, that come up. But uh, eliminating uh, the stress that's tied to that for people searching for those and and helping them uh, land in a place, um, you know, to, to live where where they love is is sort of the the mission. And um, you know, and I think we do a great job using technology to uh, to do that. So um, you know, as as far as uh, who were you know where to what, what, what the, the other question Nate was around uh who who's your ideal can... who's your ideal client if you hadn't described that yeah and, and I would say you know we work close with with really all of the the largest uh national you know multifamily players and and um, I work with a lot of uh the smaller regional players as well but it's really any um anyone that's in that multifamily space um most of our, our customers are say you know 25 uh, 50 units and higher uh, but anybody that's that's renting can actually um you know can can list their uh, their units on our on our marketplace uh, we're mostly working with really um those are, i i'm mostly working with those uh 25 units and, and higher but um yeah, it's really a it's it's a platform that's built for all shapes and sizes, and and one that um, I think really does a great job accommodating uh, the smaller players um, as well as uh, the larger REITs and and big time management companies and that sort of thing. Very cool. So, if somebody wants to get connected with you specifically or get connected with Zumper, what's where should they go to find you? Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Best place I think to connect with me is is going to be LinkedIn. So. Um, you can probably search, uh, you know, Tyler Hansen, um, and, and throw Zumper in there. It's the best way to, uh, to connect with me. Um, I, I recommend, you know, download the Zumper app on your phone and just check out, you know, apartments in the area and that sort of thing, start using it. And, uh, you'll kind of see what, uh, what all the, the rage is about. Very cool. So all those links will be in the show notes. I encourage you, if you're listening, to, to check it out. Get connected with, with uh, Tyler here. Um, he's got you know a wealth of knowledge with regards to fitness, sales, networking, Silicon Valley startup, multifamily. There's, there's so many like amazing bits of information. I think you know when you said, like, hey, I'm on LinkedIn, um, that's like a, a, a really growing platform right now. And I think people sometimes forget like, Hey, I just, I'm not in multifamily. I'm not in, um, tech. So why would I want to connect with somebody in there? And, and the, the thing is, is like, you never know going to make a difference in your life. And people have so many different skill sets that they're experts in that may not at first glance be relevant. You know, there's an amazing conversation to have, and I think you, you got a, a ton of advice to give people, and and I'd encourage them to connect with you regardless if they're selling tomatoes in in Texas or if they're, you know, have ten thousand apartments they want to. There's a lot of value in just connecting with you, so I encourage you guys to go out there on LinkedIn and check them out. So Tyler, thank you, thank you again for coming on the show and having a conversation. Uh, really liked what you had to say. Um, again, tons of knowledge and um, lots of experience there. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having me, Nate. Appreciate All right. It. Appreciate it. Take care. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.